to the Senior 1X, closing an incredible year of theater, starting with Beauty and the Beast, Lend Me a Tenor, and now our Senior 1X. For those who don't know me, I'm Mr. G, I'm the theater director here at North, and the 1X are a little different. I just kind of oversee it, kind of come in periodically, check in on them, find out that it's all student run, student written, costume, everything um, directed. So I'm going to turn it over to them, they're going to introduce themselves, what show they worked on, and then we'll begin. There will be a, a 15 minute intermission between um, uh, the show, there will be two one acts at the beginning, intermission, and two more to conclude. By concessions, please, goes to our theater fund. And make sure all cell phones and beepers and whatever you have are turned off and locate the nearest exit in just in case for an emergency. Turn it over to our great director, writers, follow the one act. Hi, I'm Rona McMaster. I wrote Waiting for Good and I co-directed as well. Uh, I'm Carly Harris and I co-directed Waiting for Good too. I'm Jake Sachs. I wrote and directed Eliana. I'm Gavin Filippo. I wrote and directed Constant Fear. I'm Nemo Ray. I wrote Chip on Your Shoulder and I'm also directing it. Thank you so much for coming out on this Wednesday night. Enjoy these incredible one acts. Thank you. Are you feeling sad or lonely? Did you always dream of something bigger and more fulfilling? Are you not in the best place right now? Do you want your life to be better? We can make that happen. Here at Chronicity, we strive to create a better experience for all. It's been our motivation since the founding of this company to improve and build upon the lives of our fellow humans, to truly grasp greatness. Not just for us, but for all. We didn't accept a life we didn't deserve, and neither should you. That's why I'm proud to announce our latest and greatest in human improvement. It's my pleasure to offer you the best year of your life. Representing a culmination of decades of work, striving for a greater place for all, the best year of your life, or in short, the best year, is our newest and foremost offering to elevate your meaningless and bleak life. <laughs> Ever wanted to climb Everest? Win the lottery, publish a bestseller, or simply rise from the squandering that your life has become? It's now just an arms like the way. We're proud to announce that the future of human happiness is sponsored by Chronicity. Now this all seems like talk, so let me take you through our unique and easy process so that one day, you too will be able to experience what we call the best year. We're all very unique and different, and because of this, we tailor the product to each person. Through a series of brief interviews with our associates, you can connect with us and allow us into your life to maximize your experience. But your eyes the catch. The small caveat or proviso exists only to ensure our success in the product and in the facilitating of your good times. The purchase of the best year of your life stipulates that it will also be the final year of your life, in order to ensure it truly is the best. <laughs> we believe this is a small price to pay in the way of what we offer. With what we can cater to you and all that will happen in the best year, living the rest of your life would seem inexplicably dull and unnecessary. So reach out to one of our local agencies today and consider purchasing the best year of your life. Hey. Hey, if you want something, I just made lunch. Help yourself. Hey, Will. It's good to see you again, man. What's been up with you? Uh, did you catch the game last night? Uh, no, I didn't get a chance to. Oh, it's a shame. He's a real nobody. So, uh, what's new are you still with? No. No, he's not. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. Yeah, that's fine. We, uh, yeah, we broke up. Uh, anyways, uh, Mary, I came to ask you, have you ever heard of this company called Chronicity? Oh, oh yeah, we have. That was a crazy infomercial you saw last night. Why I want to get away with these days. 
I don't know. They seem pretty legit to me. Are you sure? What do they offer again? They guarantee the best year of your life. Right, the best year of your life in exchange for a meager price. Your soul. <laughs> Not really. Yes, really. Isn't that in the terms? After this best year, you don't get any more years, period? Well, I mean, yes, but... Why are you bringing this up anyways? I haven't seen you in forever, and this hardly feels relevant to your life and catching up. What's been up with you? I feel like we never talk anymore. Well, I'll just the reason why I came to see you today. I was thinking about, um, buying it. Buying what? The best year of your life. You can't be serious right now. You're kidding, right? It's hard for me to believe this isn't influenced by something bigger than a cool new product. What do you mean? I mean you're using this as an easy way out because you need more than who you are. You resent yourself, and I'm sorry you do, but this isn't the solution. I just wish you would talk to me so I could help you. I don't need your help. I think you always insist that I do. I get that you've healed and survived, but not everyone can take that same path. And what about me? Why don't I deserve this? Why is it such a terrible thought for me to finally do something that I want? Why can't you accept me for who I am? This is me, the raw, ugly, tortured person that has to live through the same day over and over again. But there's a light. I see it at the end of the tunnel. I'm going to do what's best for me. Buying it is what's best. You haven't been the same since everything. You know that. I know that. I think this is just a poor coping mechanism. I also lost a mother, yet I don't run off and decide to ostensibly end my life with some silly gimmick because I worked through my grief instead of hiding from it. And don't say you did because it is incredibly clear to everyone that you have been running from it. I have not. Really? Then what happened with Ella? She was a great girl who could no longer be anchored down by your moping. Listen, I'm sorry that was uncalled for. I just, I don't think this decision is rational or sensible. Well, it is. And frankly, I only came here as a courtesy to tell you that I am. See, you and everyone else always wants me to change, to get over it, to move on. But what if I don't? What if I can't? My life has been nothing but a series of screw-ups and bad events that make people want to bless my soul and bat their eyes and remark on how tough it is. I'm tired of being tough. I'm tired of being this pity case. For the first time in a while, I have a chance at being happy. And if you don't support that, then I don't know. I just want what's best for you. We all do. That's all we've ever wanted. Do you? I am sick of being treated like this black sheep, the one who almost got out, who almost made something of himself. Instead, of all the things happened to him, and now he's stuck. A fall from a supposed former glory, like some sort of Icarus. I am sick of it. All of it. The pitiful stares, the fake condolences. I'm sorry I couldn't make it out like you. Having this neat and tidy American life, like we're all supposed to have in the movies. This is all I've got. I'll never forgive you. I'm not asking for your forgiveness. You shouldn't be so hard at that time. You don't get it. He just used to be so different. He's what? drowning in a miserable hole, and I've known nothing but sit by and watch him throw his life away. Well, it doesn't seem like that helped much either. He just used to be so different. It's hard to look at him now. He used to be this starry-eyed, ambitious kid whose only limitation was his imagination. Now he's lost everything, and he feels like a shell of who he once was. I don't know who he is anymore. Hey, um, I'm here about the best year of your life. Uh, I saw one of your commercials and I'm interested to learn more. Oh, right. Yes, please, have a seat. Could I offer you something? Coffee, tea, water even? No thanks, I'm fine. All right then. So... William. William, what brings you to us today, William? As I said, I saw one of your commercials and I'm just interested to learn more. Perfectly reasonable. That's one of the things that makes our company so great. We're up front with all of our processes and products. We love our inquisitive customers. Sure, so um, who usually buys this thing? Oh, that is a unique question. I will say our client base is normally older, call it north of 50. But our product truly is for everyone. Anyone who wants to seek improvement in their lives is generally our customer base. And how do you know what makes it best? We are on a unique interview process in which we grapple with what will truly make you happy. This can range from you sharing your passions, interests, or you designating what you desire. 
I don't say this lightly, but we can fix you. We can change you for the better. We can deliver you happiness. Really? 100% guaranteed? Guaranteed. Oh, well, you're definitely giving me some things to think about. Um, can I schedule another appointment soon? Sure. Just let me know when and I'll pencil you in. And this doesn't mean I'm committed yet, right? Nothing is set in stone until the final handshake. I'm sorry I left. I really am. Many people will offer their condolences and apologies, which you should always graciously accept. However, know that they don't owe you that. This isn't how I wanted things to turn out. I wish I was there, but I'm not. And so, in place of that, I leave you with this. Take this as a postscript, filled with anecdotes that remind you I lived, that reminds you that I loved. Please always remember to care, to feel emotions, and to let yourself be overtaken by them once in a while. Allow yourself to be involved, to be present. There is nothing more precious than the life we live in. So live. Don't get lost in yourself. I know it's easy for you, too. You're like me in that way. You're like me in so many ways. You never have to worry about making me proud, for you alone is all that I ever need. Instead, do it for yourself. Live for you, not for me, or for the vision you think I would have of you, but for the authentic version of yourself. You are destined for greatness, Willie. Never forget that. Uh, I wanted to say I'm sorry if I came across this rude the other day. You're my brother, and I simply want what's best for you, and sometimes I say things a little too bluntly. You know that. I just wish you would listen to me. Listen to you? That's all you ever want for me to listen to. I get that you've made it out and survive, but not everyone is as fortunate. Not everyone can be. I've done nothing. I work at a dead-end job watching numbers fill spreadsheets and columns and interacting with people just as dull as those numbers. I have no one to come home for, no one to make any of the grueling hours worth it. The money I make just sits there. I have no hobbies, no interests. I have nothing. I have nothing. Why are you such a pity party all the time? Woe is you, congratulations. You're right, you do have nothing because any time you get close to getting something, you self-sabotage and throw it all away. What happened to going to school to become a writer? Instead, you're a CPA certified husk that crunches numbers. What's happened to any relationship you've ever had where just when it gets good, you either back out yourself or become so miserable that they had to leave? You have this destructive pattern that can't be fixed by some band -aid. You don't get to complain about your life when all you've been is complicit in the forging of its mediocrity. You don't want to be happy. I do. I do want to be happy. I wish for nothing more than damn happiness. It eluded me my entire life. But that's what I've been trying to say. And you stood in the way. This isn't true happiness. Don't you get that? It's fake. You've convinced yourself that magically all your problems will fade away at the drop of this hat. But they won't. This will change nothing. You have to deal with your problems and not run from them. God, you're so frustrating. I don't know why I came here. Neither do I. You know what? One day, sometime in the future, whether it be the final minutes of your last day alive, you're going to realize something. You're going to realize that all you've ever done is push people who care about you away. You're drowning in a miserable hole you've made for yourself, and I'm sorry you can't see that, but I'm done. I'm done. This will make me happier. All research indicates no, 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 no research, no science, no nothing. I need you to tell me. You will be happier. Okay. All right then. Would you like to start the process? I think my first question, and obviously the most basic one, is: Are you happy, William? And I mean truly happy. No, no, I'm not. I haven't been for a long time. I see. Why do you think that is? I think it's because of the life I lead, hence why I'm here. I see. I know that might be an uncomfortable question, but it allows us to get a baseline of what your life should be like in an ideal form tailored to you. 
from your response. I take it we're not keeping many things from your current life? Definitely. All right, then. Let's start by filling in some information about yourself. What is your current occupation? I'm an accountant. Do you enjoy what you do? No, but I mean, who does it anymore? <laughs> is there something you'd rather do? Well, when I was a kid, I always wanted to be a writer. I didn't even have to be famous. As long as I could fill my days with words, sentences, and propositions, and have a meal here and there, I would have been happy. So, I guess I would rather be a writer. An interesting and lucrative position. I'm sure I'll be able to work something out to incorporate that. So how about family? Have any brothers, sisters, or parents? Not any I'm close with. How about a wife? Girlfriend? Boyfriend? Husband? Nothing. No matter. It's less to anchor you down. What is your dream place to live? Whoa, does this involve me relocating? It can. How can the questions more for us to nail down your mindset? We like to gauge who you are as a person through your dream location. Well, the Midwest has always been nice to me, but I'd say I'd always want to live in Europe, Paris maybe. Right the Google feast wouldn't be the worst. See. Now, one of the more difficult ones on here is, if you were to move, where would you want to be buried? I mean, would you rather be interred in the new place where you find yourself, or in your hometown? Well, I guess I never thought about that. I think I want to be buried in the place I end up rather than my hometown. I think I've desperately wanted something so much that it makes sense to capture my progress by eternally putting me in the place I work so hard for. A very profound answer. I completely agree. And one of the bigger questions on here is, what would you describe as some of your happiest memories? Well, the happiest memory I have is in the hospital cafeteria. I sat at the American food court with my mom during one of her many days at the hospital, getting poked and prodded, and I sat and had a meal with her. Probably one of the worst ones ever. The food reminiscent of being cooked the week prior, the chair stiff and uncomfortable, and the nauseating smell of sterilization. Yet, I sat, talked, and ate. She got sick a week later and died shortly after that, but I think it's those mundane moments that we take for granted so often. Those moments that I miss the most. Those moments that I feel the happiest. You know how they say that you can't appreciate something until it's gone? Well, I think you can't appreciate something until it can't happen again. Sure, things can be gone for weeks or months, and there's still that hope that clings to your soul and tugs at your heart that it might just come back. Only you know when it, when it won't. It can't. You truly appreciate it the most. You know, I'm very sorry to hear that, William. So what do you want to accomplish with your life? I feel as I've said it a million times to a million people. I want to accomplish something. Be notable. I was always told I would be someone, but here I am stirring my 30s down like a barrel of a gun. The only measurable accomplishment I've had in the last five years is getting a car loan for little interest. I just want to do something. Don't, you, don't worry. You'll have plenty of time to do that. And so, it's my pleasure to announce that your paperwork is done. The ball is in your court now, so to speak, as whenever you're ready, we can begin the process. I understand if you need to take a week or so to explain things to those close to you, if you see my clerk out no, there. No, uh, I'm ready. I just have one last request. And what would that be? I want to apologize to the people who try and stick around. I'm sorry that my life didn't have any other option. I'm sorry that my life didn't go in a different trajectory. I'm sorry that I disappointed, let down so many. I'm sorry that I couldn't keep writing. I'm sorry that I couldn't achieve something great. I've only ever wanted to do something with my life. And you will do something with your life. Okay, I'm ready. Welcome to the start of your new, better life. It truly is as good as it gets. Being that it takes place in World War II Nazi Germany, there are some 
uh, topics that are covered that may be uncomfortable for some audience members, namely anti-Semitism, domestic violence, and I also wanted to clarify that when dealing with these topics, I think it's super important to do so with care. So when writing the script and when directing my actors, I was very careful to cross-reference the information and through teachers and specialists in my own research, and it's all very thorough and very intentional. And the good news is that means it's all very legitimate. The unfortunate news is that means it's all very real. That being said, please enjoy Eliana.
son, today I leave to fight for our home and for the Third Reich. It will feel good to fight. There is no greater honor as a German man, no greater sign of masculinity and strength. However, I will not have the time to say goodbye to you and my Abigail, so I'm writing this letter. But this is not goodbye for forever. I will write home with stories of bloodshed and glory, and I'll carry our family name with pride. And soon enough, the war will be over and I will return. I promise, so. Until then, I've left you with my pocket watch you always loved. Something to remember me by. It's old, but there's not a scratch on it. And I want you to keep it that way. Soon you'll grow up and be a strong young man. Make me proud of the way I raised you. Keep up the hard work and do not let your emotions get the best of you. Then maybe I'll meet you again out on the battlefield, fighting by my side. That would make me proud of you, son. Tell your mother I said goodbye. Carl. Discuss. 
I'll see myself out. Oh, but, Parts, think about the call you want. Yeah? I'll be the same. Muti, you don't understand. This is my opportunity. A Herr Müller can teach me how to fight, Muti. How dare you! You embarrass me in front of Herr Müller, and then you have the nerve to beg me to leave? I don't know why you want to leave me so badly anyway. I do everything I can for you. I do everything for you! And what do you do in return? Beg to leave at the first chance you get? You have a house with a roof and food, but you prefer the hell that's outside these doors and to sit at a dinner table with your own mother. How dare you? You're just like your father. Muti, I'm, I'm sorry. You know I love you. I, I, I really can't thank you and enough. you expect me to believe you now? Oh, Muti, please. I, I'm I, ashamed. That's not what I meant, Muti. You know that. He knows father, Muti. I've heard enough. Good night, Hans. Oh, Muti, we can fix this. Let me fix this, Muti. Please.
These people just aren't like you. They don't think the same, act the same, don't deserve the same. It's my job to find these Jews and rightfully take them to where they can be guarded by people like your father and I. Like uh, a concentration camp? Precisely. Dachau, to be exact. Your father's there right now. What? Do you really mean that? <clears throat> when I lied to you, son, I was speaking to him the other day about you joining the war. He was ecstatic. If you join me, I can put in a good word for you. I have you standing right there next to your old pops. Guarding, fighting, laughing, whatever you like. He said he liked the idea? Well, what else did he say? Of course he did. Don't you? Well, of course I do. Oh boy, what will I even say? He'll barely recognize me, I've grown so much. Don't you worry about that, son. He'll be proud no matter what. There's just one issue. Well, what is it? It's my boss. He's been real angry lately. See, there's this one prisoner, a, a little girl around 19 years old. She's been giving us a bit of grief. See, a few months ago, she escaped the camp, and normally, I don't do this, Hans, but I took it upon myself to find this girl. Quite disliked her, really. Something about her just really gets me, and I refuse to let go this time. I know it's been months, but I can just tell. I know for a fact that I'm close. Do you understand me, Hans? Boss man won't let us go through with our plan if I don't find this girl. That's why I'm telling you all this. Because I need your help. Help how? If you so much as hear, see, even smell the signs of that ungrateful, untrustworthy, unlovable little girl, you come to me. Do you understand me, Hans? You come to me and you tell me immediately. And Hans, if you help me, I'll protect you. Okay? I promise. So, Hans, what'll be? Good! After all, I'm helping you too, isn't that right? We just have to take care of a little business first. Hmm? Well, Hansi, justice doesn't rest, so I really must get going. You know, I've just pictured a smile on your father's face when he sees you in that uniform. Auf Wiedersehen!
Please, Eliana, call me Muti. Hello. Don't be rude, Hans. You're interrupting. My absolute favorite Muti, Muti is the one where... Don't you think it's time for her to leave? Excuse me? No, Muti. Really. You said just a few days, and now it's been over a month. It's time for her to go. Hans! Do you know how many people are dying every day? You can't even step outside these doors without being reminded of death and destruction. You love- Lower your voice, Hans. You will learn Harry Mueller. You love to say you're afraid I'll die in the war. But she'll be the death of both of us. Hans. No. It's time for you to leave, Eliana. Hans, enough of this! Sit down and have some dinner. No, Muti. I'm sick and tired of you telling me what to do. I am the man of this house while well, father is gone. And I should be able to say what I want when my life is at stake. Oh, get a grip, Hans. If you want to be treated like a man, you should start acting like one. You can hardly decide what to wear in the morning. What makes you think you can handle big decisions? Like Eliana's life or yours? You're lucky you have me to protect you from yourself. I always know best, Hans. A mother always knows best. No, Muti. I'm ready. I should be out there, fighting with respect and honor, the, the glory of the battlefield, Muti. Enough naivety, Hans. War doesn't care if you're ready or not. A bullet doesn't care if you're ready or not. But let me prove myself. I can prove myself. There's nothing for me here. And, there's, and I have nothing to prove to you or to some disgust. Enough! I will not allow you to speak to either of us in that tone. Us, Muti? There's no us with her. She's not your daughter, Muti. Quit acting like she is. You don't need to protect her or, or feed her or save her. She's not your daughter. She's a better daughter than you are a son. She treats me with respect and with love. Something you seem to have forgotten how to do. She doesn't love you, Muti. You call me naive, but you can't see that she doesn't love you. She just needs you. Well, I don't. I don't need you to tell me what to do. I don't need you to make decisions for me. And I don't need you standing in the way of me and father. Your father would be ill if he saw the way you spoke to your own mother. If he saw me? Muti, you are housing a Jew in his home. If he saw what you've done, who knows what he would do? You are allowing your emotions to overcome you, to control you, and it is making you weak. You're, you're losing sight of reality, Muti. Don't you see how many people are dying every day because of her? When father comes home and sees this delusion, he's going to- Your father is dead! Be coming home, and he sure as hell isn't waiting for you out there. How could you say that? He hasn't written in months, Hans. You need to. Accept. How could you say that? How could you even say that about the man who is fighting for us to live in this home, under this roof, eating this food? He isn't fighting for you to talk about him that way, and he sure as hell isn't fighting for some Jew. He left me this pocket watch, so I wouldn't forget everything that he's done for me. For us, but clearly, clearly you would have. And now you've replaced him with what? A, a walking death sentence? You give her your food and your love when you don't even have enough of those for the two of us. It makes me absolutely sick. You make me absolutely sick.
date, 1947. Time of death, 9.36 p.m. The name of deceased, Michael Prescott, age 45. Cause of death, several stab wounds to the chest. No open found, I assume it was a stiletto. I found a business card on him for Burton Construction. Maybe that can be important. This is the fourth body we found that's not killed in the same way, Lord. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Unfortunately, yes. Margaret, we have a serial killer on our hands. God, what is this city come to? Borderline anarchy, bitch. Come on. I know someone who might be able to help us. Mary, I figured I'd find you here. Do you come visit us often? Seems to be on a first name basis. Simon Midge. Oh. oh, hello, William. And who's your little friend here? She's quite cute. This is Margaret McMillan, my partner. I don't swing that way, Mary. Don't you try anything funny. We're on the job that I'm looking new for entertainment. Alas, it's all I know now. Ever since Daddy cut me out of the trust fund, I've had to find alternate ways of making money. But you can come all the way here just to chit chat. Do you need something from me? Yes, actually. Tell me about your recent clients. Did anyone look like this man? Nope, never seen him in my life. Uh huh. <coughs> I see. You know, it sure would be a shame if your father found out you're still doing this kind of thing for work. Maybe I should go have a chat with him. No, William, please don't. He'll kill me. I might as well just tell him when I see him later. It'll save you the trouble. Okay. <laughs> if you don't tell him, I'll take you out for coffee. It'll be just like the old days. The old days are over, Mary. If your father hates me. He'd never let us get coffee, much less get married like you wanted. But you don't know that. Maybe he's changed. I mean, it has been 12 years. Trust me. I know he hasn't changed. But will they? I still love you. Hey there, mister. Care for some entertainment? Well, that's no way to speak to your father now, is it, Mary? Daddy, what are you doing down here? <laughs> I came to scope out some of the building sites. These skyscrapers don't build themselves. I see. And how have you been? I was well, until I discovered that my daughter was a tart. Lemon, apple, or raspberry. <laughs> Look, I know you disapprove of this work, but it's all I've got, since I don't have access to your money anymore. Yes, and it will stay that way. It's called a trust fund for a reason, you know. You have to trust the person in it. And especially with what happened with you in Morocco, I don't think I ever could. If you found a respectable job, I'd change my mind. Like what? Some temporary secretary like all the other girls? Maybe I'll shoot high and be a politician. <laughs> what are you talking about? A female politician in Chicago? That's like saying you want a man of the moon. Oh, Daddy, you're impossible. <laughs> it's like talking to a brick wall. Listen, Mary, you understand me, you have kids, but when you're a parent, you do anything to protect them. You're terrible! Did you know that? Mr. Burton, what a coincidence. I was just looking for you. Great, it's you. What do you want, detective? Hello, Margaret. Hello, Mr. Bain. Well, that's a nice hello. We found a business card, one of your business cards from the most recent stiff. Does the name Michael Prescott ring a bell to you? Prescott, Prescott, Prescott. Prescott, 45 years old, black hair. That's the one. I assume that means you know him. I do. He's my mom. Was my former. God! Who do you want to kill Mike? That's why we're here. Did he have anyone he didn't get along with? Anyone who might wish him harm? Nothing comes to mind, except maybe my daughter. They were romantically involved for a while. 
daughter. She said she's never seen him before. She lied to me. I don't know why I didn't notice them. The way she avoided eye contact and the constant fidgeting of her purse. I've got to find her. Well, thank you, Mr. Burton, for the information. Of course, Detective. All right, Mitch, I want you to go back to the office and look over the case file. There might be something we missed. I gotta go find Mary. She already said she doesn't know him, though. The damn woman lied! Mary! I knew I'd find you here. William, what are you doing back here? I need to, I need to talk to you again about that case. What about it? I already told you everything I knew. You know, I thought you did, too. But after a chat with your father, I'm not so sure you were being truthful. Not in the slightest. What did my father tell you? Well, he told me that you and the stiff had been seeing each other for a little while. Now please inform me, Mary, why didn't you tell me you knew Prescott? I was scared, okay? This isn't the first time one of the men I've been with has ended up in a bag. I didn't want to be a suspect. Please, William, I'm telling you, I had nothing to do with it. I, I believe you, Mary. But what do you mean this isn't the first time? How many other clients have ended up dead? Three. With Michael, I guess four. But I didn't assume anything of it, that's all. <coughs> Chicago is a scary place. You know that better than anyone else. We're always living in fear. I just guessed they were all caught up in some shady dealings. Well, thank you, Mary, for telling me. I'm sorry you ended up smack dab in the middle of all this. Say, why don't you meet me at the corner of Michigan and Chicago Avenue in two hours, and we'll <coughs> head over and get a nice meal somewhere. Like, old times. Maybe, William. I'll make up my mind later. It's your turn to wait. You too, Mary. There you are, Will. I've been looking all over for you. Were you able to find that Mary girl? I did. I just missed her. <coughs> Was there anything we skipped over in those files? I found something we didn't see. Apparently, all the men were seen frequenting the same working girl right before the death. Do you think it could be Mary? It might just be. But we'll need to look into it more before we jump to conclusions. I guess so. So they were all involved with Mary, huh? How the hell would she be in the center of all this? Is someone doing it for her? Like, some sort of weird, twisted, secret admirer? No, it couldn't be. But who else would it be that's doing all this? Unless... No, it, it couldn't be him. He's... William, before our friends, I almost forgot to tell you. While I was at the office, Mr. B called, says he remembers something about the case. Says he wants to talk to you in person about the last victim. He'll be on the corner of Michigan and Chicago Avenue in an hour and 45 minutes. And not to be late. All right, um, go wait in the car. I'll, I'll be there in a moment. No, he said only you can come. Private matter, I assume. Copy that. I'll see you later, Mitch. Michigan and Chicago, huh? What a coincidence. Robert Hayes. Get for a drink, William? No, that's all right. I brought my own. <laughs> Say, why don't you drink with me, since we have to talk about such grisly business. Um, I have business to attend to afterwards. I have to say sharp. Your funeral. You, uh, wanted to talk to me again about that Prescott guy? Yes, yes. How's that case coming along? Anything new? Yeah. I think we're close to fighting this guy. Maybe, 
One more day, and we'll have him. Oh, you have no idea how close you are. No idea. D did you say something, Robert? You know, William, I never really was fond of you. Especially when you were with my daughter. What are you talking about, Robert? Go! Oh, what the hell? Go! Just like those other men, you were never good enough. That's right, William. I killed those men, just like I'm about to kill you. And after you, my daughter. I can't let an entertainer like that tarnish my family name. I come from a long line of businessmen. No taxi dancer is going to ruin that. Jeez, Lily, you're gonna scare the girl half to death. 
sorry. How are you? Yawn, can you please spice this up a bit and tell Oliver just how sexy he looks in his tight little shirt or how hot he'll look in a little suit of prom? God, Roxy, can you really keep it in your pants? Quite me. I was doing great until that. Thank you, Lily. Oh, cheer up, Huck. I didn't mean to scare you all that much. Lil, what the hell does Huck mean? You know, like a huckleberry? Because Allie's just as sweet as a huckleberry. So the one who practically lives with a halo around her head? Wait a minute, that's me, not her. Charlie, the world doesn't revolve around you. They can't even see us, for God's sake. <sighs> well, still, I'm the angelic one. Ah, uh, yes, we know, little miss. But Allie, we can't go to a party. We have to study. It was final. Oh me. my God, shut up. I'm sorry, what? What did I do? Oh my gosh, not you. I'm sorry. That was directed to my brain. Real slick. Uh, anyways. Do you have any plans for prom, Allie? Oh, Evan, gee, you guys have to see the progress I got yesterday. Wow. <laughs> Looks very, um, baptismal. I think it's great, Lil. It really screams you. I really forget how much I like this girl. I think you both can use a little roughing up. <laughs> how dare you? You have no idea how much time I spent on my hair every morning. <sighs> Cry me a river. You look better with your hair pushed back anyway. Please tell me that wasn't you trying to hit on me. You'd be lucky to have a girl like me. I'm a dream come true. More like a nightmare. Anyways, no Miles, I don't have plans for prom. Not yet we don't, but we will. Oliver, since it's your senior prom and all, what do you have planned? I don't believe in the social normalities of prom. It's just a scam to try and convince us all that a dance will solve all of the social and economic inequalities of the world. <laughs> Well, are you just peachy today, Oliver? Why don't we just go as a group? Oh, no, Allie, dear, that is a social suicide. You have to get Mr. Dark and sexy to ask you. Roxy, you are so vain. There's more to a person than just what they look like on the outside. I mean, do you seriously believe she only likes him because he's cute? Well, what else does he have? It's not like she knows anything else about him. She knows plenty. I think that's a great idea, Lily. That way there's no pressure of asking anyone. No! Oh! Huh? Uh, Dude, what's up? Jeez, Miles, are you okay? No, oh, I'm not okay. Dude, what's this kid's deal? The kid has a name, Roxy. Let him speak. You all really this dead? What are you talking about, Miles? Damn it, Allie! I've been in love with you since the first time I saw you walk into our freshman biology class. For three years, all I wanted was you! I can't stand watching fun over this Mr. Dark and gloomy anymore. Mr. Dark and sexy kid, get it right. Stick it <laughs> Wait, what? First of all, I'm not dark and gloomy. I just see the world for what it really is, which is a burning dumpster fire. Oliver, can you say anything nice at all? I'm with her. Why can't you say anything positive? How did, how did you even know about that, Miles? I have eyes, Allie. I was looking at you. You were always looking at him. Allie, is that true? A lie. Tell him. This wasn't how I planned on telling you, Oliver, but I've been into you for a while. I just didn't know how or when to tell you, and then I like, stop. Oh, no, he just cut her off? Maybe he'll tell her that he likes her, too. Allie, listen, you're great, but I really only have platonic feelings for you. Oh, God, no, not the friend zone. Anything but the friend zone! <laughs> <laughs> but I thought I'd be making it pretty clear I see you like a sister. Plus, I'm into Lily. I'm sorry, what the hell did he just say? I'm gonna kill him, I swear I'll kill him! Wait a minute, Oliver, are you serious right now? Of course I am, Lily. I didn't think I could be more obvious. It definitely could have been, buddy boy. <laughs> Listen, Oliver, that's sweet and all, and I'm sure every other girl falls at your feet for the whole dark and sexy thing, but I just want to say I don't feel the same. Finally, someone uses the correct descriptors, dark and sexy. How hard is that? What do you mean you don't feel the same? First of all, you must be pretty arrogant if you think I'd immediately say I felt the same. Especially considering you handled that like a complete jackass towards Allie and didn't consider her feelings at all. And second of all, I'm gay. Well. You get him, kid. I didn't like her. I changed my mind. You didn't tell us. I didn't know how. Thank you for telling us. <laughs> So, like, fully gay or just by? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, very funny. I'm gonna go though. Call me later, Ellie? Of course. 
I should I not to? Gotta study for my math test. Sorry, Allie. I hope we can still be friends. <laughs> Down, girl. He's trying to be nice. Yeah, I get it. I feel so stupid. I... I'm sorry. I never meant for anyone to come out like this. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I knew you had your own angels and demons to face, so I never wanted to intervene. I just cared about you too much to ruin our relationship by dropping that bomb. <laughs> Ali, he sees us for who we are. He gets us. Now, for the love of God, go get him, Tiger. I can't oh, believe you've been here all along and I've never noticed. I just it's thought you knew. You. It's, it's always been you. you. Charlie, you bring out the good in me. I didn't think anyone could do that. But you, you're magic. Allie, I want to take you to prom. Say yes! I thought you'd never ask. How about it, Charlie? Will you be my date to Allie's prom? Shut it, Roxy. As if we weren't going together already. <laughs>
big hand for our winner. Also, I'd like to acknowledge our graduating seniors from the theater department. They've been quite uh, inspirational and an asset to the program and we're all going to miss them next year but we wish them much success as they continue their journey on whatever they go into. So I would like to acknowledge Aaron, Gary, Gavin, DeFilippo, Jake Sachs, Nana Wright, Harley Harris, Ren Tudor, Ryan Lutz, Ronan McMaster, Warren Hustis, and Quinn Addy. Congratulations, graduates. I love getting to know the students the last two years, and our program would not have been the same without them, so congratulations on the you guys so much. And also, I know I can't go by without acknowledging these terrific theater parents, all of them who've helped, but the ones who've been here, no matter who, uh, just a phone call away to help with everything. Colin Hughes. Congratulations and have a good night. Thank you.